praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Can everybody rise to your feet? We are going to praise the Lord this morning. We're going to give him what he deserves. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, I don't know what you came to do, but I did come to lift him up. Why? Because he's been good to me. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. Anybody know you've been faithful? Hallelujah. I just want to give him, I made it through the week praise. I want to lift my hands and say glory to your name. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We are still celebrating the victory of Calvary. And we're going to raise our voices this morning with our morning hymn. It says, At Calvary. Years I spent. Years I spent in vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me. On Calvary. Mercy there was great. And grace was free. Pardon them. Pardon them as multiply to me. They're my burden at Calvary. By God's word at last, my sin I learned. Then I tremble at the law I spurn. Till my guilty soul turn to Calvary. Glory, mercy there was great. Part of them. true salvation's plan oh the grace that brought it down to man the mighty God Celebration is in order for what happened at Calvary. Come on, I just want you to put your hands on it like this. Come on, clap those hands. All over the room, come on. We're going to celebrate the Lord today. He's our provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. Yes, he is. Come on, everybody, raise your voice and say, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. My provider. My strong tower. My everything to the hurt and pain. He's my, He's my relief. Celebrate. Celebrate. Come on, let's raise it up. Say, 
Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. My provider. My strong tower. My strong tower. My everything. My everything. Through the hurt of pain. He's my relief. He's my relief. Celebrate. Celebrate. Come on, let's take it up and say, Jehovah Jireh. Be thankful unto him 
and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be unto God. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for certainly we serve a true and a living God. Our Father, which art in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come this morning, our Father, our heads bow to the mother dust of this earth. Yet we lift our eyes to the hills, knowing our strength comes from thee and thee alone. We come this morning, our Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts, our Father, that add us to see another day in the land of the living, our Father. And we do not take that lightly. As we come this morning, our Father, we look around, we see the bright sunshine, we see the stars in the sky, we see the sun coming out. We know, our Father, that you are still in control, our Father, no matter what man may say, our Father. We ask you, Father, as we come, our Father, please forgive us for our sins, and we forgive those who sin against us, and we ask a closer walk with thee. Our Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Father, our Lord and our Savior, the bright morning star, Mary's baby, true to the foundation to our soul, our Father. We thank you, Father, that you thought so much of us, that you loved us, that you sent Jesus down from heaven, Die and go on across with all my heavenly life to the tree of life. And because of that, Father, we are yet translated to the kingdom of God, our Father. We thank you for that, our Father. And Father, I know Jesus is in heaven intersecting for us where you are, but you didn't leave us alone, our Father. We have the Holy Spirit. Help us to know, our Father, the Holy Spirit is in our bodies, our Father. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we need to be careful what we say, what we put into our uh, thoughts and our minds, our Father. Please continue to renew us, our Father, with the renewing of our minds. It would be acceptable and perfect will to do what you're supposed to be on this earth, our Father. We are your hands, we are your feet, we are your eyes, our Father. Father, as we come, our Father, we know that this world, our Father, is getting away from us, our Father. This is not our home, and I'm glad it's not our home, our Father. We see the wars, rumors of wars. We see heartache. We see hate. Father, there's so much going on, our Father. But our hands are on your hands. As long as we stay focused on you, our Father, you will continue to bless us and get us through. Father, we ask you please blessings upon this Marion Avenue Baptist Church. Bless the shepherd you put over here. Continue to be with Reverend Shaw and his family. Put strong arms protection around him. Cover him with your blood, our Father, as he leads us and does other work throughout this community, our Father. Be with our Father throughout the city, our Father, especially in our school system, our Father. We know there's an answer, our Father. You are the answer, our Father. As we put our faith in you, our Father, then we can get this situation uh, cornered and out of the way, our Father. Be with us, Father, throughout this coming week, our Father, in our homes, communities, and our jobs, and our schools. Give us a word this morning, our Father, and add it in our hearts and tell it to the dying world. Let us be a light, our Father, on the, on the hill that cannot be hid. And Father, when this, all this work is done here on earth, we know there's a place for us in heaven. There'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more heartaches, no more hate. Everything will be Sunday by and by. And we'll praise your name forever in a land that never go old. These all blessings for us in Jesus' name we pray, giving thanks, and amen.
I see you out there doing it. Come on, praise him, praise him. Come on, put those hands together. Do you lift him up? Can I just say you, can I hear you say, we love you, we love, we love you, 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 we bless you, we bless you, we lift you, we lift you, Norfolk State University, Virginia, sorry, Norfolk State, Bowie State, and Morgan State University. And we, excuse me, we also uh, visited the uh, United States Capitol and uh, some of the exhibits in the Mall on Washington, and we went to the uh, National African American Museum of History, the, Miss, the Smithsonian. Um, I'm not big on words, but I just have to give a few uh, thank yous um, to the AKAs, to uh, Desiree and Tony Anthony, Yahan Coley, Lyndon Pryor, Pamela and Andrew Roberts, Liz and Calvin Clark, Paula and Lamont Jackson, Donna Butler and Althea Jackson. These individuals dug into their pockets and blessed us tremendously. And, and because of their, them and their donations, we were able to provide the majority of the meals for these young people so that they didn't incur any additional expenses. And we also um, were able to uh, have some fun at main event. Um, they had, uh, they were able to bowl, uh, laser tag, and a lot of other things. So that was a great time. And while we were at main event, uh, Sister Tempe and I were um, in the restaurant area and the uh, bartender, I mean the waitress, she <laughs> she um, came over to us <laughs> and said, uh, she, comp she was very complimentary of our young people. She said that they get a lot of big groups in there and that our youth were very, very respectful uh, and very well managed. So, um, great job. Um, I'd also like to uh, give thanks to uh, Sister Rhonda Gummer. She provided some snacks for us um, on the bus. And uh, Sister Danielle Marshall, she came in. We had two uh, uh, information sessions for the college tour, and she did a presentation for the journals that we use. And also, my personal assistant, Vivian Frazier, uh, you know, without her, uh, we wouldn't have gotten everything that we got. Um, our illustrious chaperones. When I tell y'all they the real MVPs, they are the real MVPs. Uh, Sister Tempe Grant, uh, she's at work today. Sister Felicia Sitgraves. Um, Pastor Ken Williams, uh, he's pastoring at his church. Reverend Dion Wright. Um, Deacon D. Briscoe. And Brother Matthew White. 
and um, I know, you know, Reverend Shaw says that I'm the coordinator, but it was not a me, it was a we. And I mean, when, when I tell you they stepped up and they are the real MVP. So with, uh, without further ado, we have some young people that are going to share um, their experience. So I went to the college fair this year and last year. And last year we went down south and this year we went up north. And oh, I go to Central and I'm a junior. But <clears throat> I prefer Morgan State. That was my favorite one out of all the colleges we went to this year and last year. And you know, going on a college tour and doing the journal, even though we didn't want to do the journal, the journal really helped because that's like where you see Oh, <laughs> that's where you guys see like how much you like the college. So I'm not gonna say what my least favorite college was, but I could tell like I would not be happy there compared to Morgan, I would be happy there. And then the colleges up north, they're more renovated and better and like, I don't know. It's just, I could see myself there and yeah, so. <laughs> Hello, my name's Evan. I go to Manuel. Uh, I'm a ninth grader. My favorite college was probably Howard because it was a college that, like, it just had exactly everything I wanted. It had all, it had just had all the things that I feel like I would need in a college. It had a great home life. It had great security. It just had, I can't even express it. it <laughs> It was most likely one of the best colleges I've ever seen in my entire life. So, thank you. Um, my name is Mylon. Um, I go to Newburgh. My favorite college was Hampton, though, because I liked all the people. They was fun, and I don't know. I liked the classes, I guess. Good morning, church family. Um, my name is Bella Pointer. I go to Mail. I'm a sophomore. Um, <laughs> my two favorite colleges were Morgan State and Howard. Howard had a really good community, and they just seemed very welcoming, and I could really see myself there in the future. Then for Morgan State, I really focus on track and cross country right now. So, and they have D1 schools there, and cross country and track. So, I'm really gonna try and get a scholarship so I can save my family some money. <laughs> and yeah. Thank you. Hey, good morning, Saints. Hey, first of all, to close this out, to God be the glory because of the safe travel from here to back here safely. And all 48 got back home and the chaperone. I also just want to thank our pastor for this opportunity to see the vision, sir, the exposure. I, I tell you, you should be very blessed with the young leaders that we have in Burnett Avenue. I challenge them. I, I challenge them because I got to know them a little bit better. And I said, those who have 4.0s in school, I would buy you dinner. I had a lot, and, 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 and I thought, oh my God, man, I'm going to run out of money. But we have some great leaders, upcoming leaders in Burnett Avenue that we should continue to push for this college tour. Last but not least, our first leader who coordinated this whole event for us. She's very humble, but she poured all this together. Let's give Sister Rhonda Jackson a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Listen, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, speak on behalf of Hill Street Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where my pastor is, Ken Williams. 
Um, first, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> to God be the glory. Um, I want to thank Bernard Avenue and you all's pastor for allowing Hill Street to be a part of this dynamic tour. Uh, this was our second year of being a part of it. And the fact that we were able to come together as one big body of church family and take these 48 young people and have an experience that I didn't have when I was growing up. Some of us didn't have it all, but to be able to give them something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives, we appreciate for allowing us to be a part of it. And it'd be remiss if I, my pastor would get me when I get back home if I didn't thank you all for allowing us to be here. And we're looking forward to next year and building upon this. I already told Sister Jackson, uh, get ready, because I think we're going to need more seats uh, coming, because we're going we're gonna to show out this thing. And, we, and Hill Street's already coming up with a plan. I've already started on trying to be more incorporated with this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, church family. Will you help me thank our coordinators and our chaperones? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's hard work. Um, it's one thing to cast the vision. It's another thing to implement the vision. And so I'm grateful for Sister Jackson. Uh, she's been working with this a long time. Back in 2010, when this vision was cast, she was one of the people who was drafted to get on the bus with us and, um, and to expose our young people. I really believe that exposure is the key to future success. You can be whatever you see, but if you don't see it, it will be difficult to imagine and understand the potentialities for your life. So that's what it's all about. We know that our students go to a variety of schools, um, but we want to expose them so that they understand how big the world is and that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that they belong in this world wherever they choose to be. And so I'm very proud of, of uh, this group. Many of them were babies when we started doing this or were born after. Um, I know when we started going on a college tour, I thought about it, my son was one when we started this college tour. Uh, Riley was one, Danny was a baby, Mylon was a little bitty thing, Evan, and now all of them are grown up now, and they're getting ready to go to college, and just, yeah, it's wild, makes, somebody's getting old, it's, yeah, I don't know who it is, it's, something is happening with time, but thank you all for your support and uh, your encouragement of that very significant work. Is the family of um, Araya Lilani Crittenden here? Okay. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Oh, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Indeed, Jesus loves the little children so much that he said to his disciples, if anyone mistreats one of these little ones, it is better that a millstone be tied around his neck and he be thrown into the midst of the sea. We understand that children come from God. They come through us as God's gift to the world. Therefore, we are stewards of the gift of God and it is right for us to dedicate these little ones back to God. All good and perfect gifts come from the Lord. And so mother, do you commit yourself to the Christian nurture of your baby girl? Do you commit yourself to putting all that stuff that your mama and your grandparents and your great grandparents instilled into you? Reminding them of the rich faith tradition that we hold and the way that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to show up in this world and do things for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you? Her great 
great granddaddy was a pastor of this church from 1961 to 1977, Reverend J.O. We're proud to still have the Crittenden family as a part of this church. Do you, family, commit yourself to being the wise counsel around this mother, praying for her, giving her all that she needs in order that she might rear this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Do you? And church family, do we commit ourselves to being the type of environment where young people might grow and develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ on their own terms? Do we recommit ourselves to seeing children never as an imposition, always as an opportunity to contribute and invest in God's future? Do we? Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for this sweet baby girl. We ask that you would hold her in the palm of your hand, that you would give her every gift and every talent that she needs, resources that she might be able to fully explore your dream for her very life. We proclaim over her, O oh God, that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the good things that you have in store for her. So, Lord, we ask that you would be a hedge of protection all about her. Give her mother the wisdom she needs in order to rear her, guide her footsteps. This day we dedicate her to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said together, amen. Tamia Crittenden commits herself to the Christian nurture of Araya Lilani Crittenden entering into this commitment at Bernard Avenue Baptist Church as a part of the congregational worship on April 14, 2024. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time, would you rest upon your feet that we might acknowledge you this day? All of our first time friends, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, let's show our sister how excited we are that she's here. Bless you. We're glad that you're here. And we pray that something will be said or done that will encourage you on your way. If you have a church family, please give them our regards. If not, we invite you to hang on around here at the net. We're always glad to have new family in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here today. God bless you on your journey. Amen. Uh, Brother Deacon Briscoe, I tell you what, we'll add to your, uh, your lunch bill. So if, if y'all can bring your 4.0s in here next month, um, the church will do something real special for you, okay? We ain't going to leave Deacon Briscoe out there by himself. It's giving time, and uh, we want to give unto God a portion of that which God has given to us. Let's lift those gifts high. Lord, indeed, we thank you for gifts to give. We pray that you'll take these gifts, maximize and multiply them for the upbuilding of your kingdom and pour blessings back into the lives of your people that there would be no lack. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, church family. This is Lauren White with this week's edition of the Net News. We're happy to receive your offerings through the Cash App, but please remember to include your full name and an email address in the notes section. Likewise, when filling out your offering envelope, please write your full name and your email or home address. Our congregation has several givers with same or similar names. Regardless of the size of your donation, we cannot credit it to any record if we are given a first name or last name only. Supplying as much identifying information as possible helps us make sure all of your offering is credited to your record and will be included in your year-end contribution statement. We have purchased additional scripture journals for the Book of Acts preaching series and expect them to be available this weekend. Please purchase yours at the welcome desk for $5 each while they last. We are now receiving applications for our Vacation Bible School for Children with Learning Differences, which will be held July 8th through 12th. Bluegrass Center for Autism, 
will conduct this special VBS along with our volunteers. Space is limited to a total of 40 participants and is open to the public at large. Please know that the application process is necessary to help Bluegrass Center for Autism determine which children can be placed in this special VBS session. We encourage Burnett Avenue members who want to take advantage of this opportunity to submit their application as soon as possible to the welcome desk or the church office in person or by mail. The eight page application can be downloaded and printed from our website. Burnett Avenue is inviting high school students to participate in the 2024 Lot Carry Youth Seminar to be held on the campus of the University of Maryland Eastern Shore June 22nd through 27th. This seminar promises a week of spiritual growth, leadership development, and community service. Participants will engage in workshops, worship sessions, and discussions designed to empower them to make a positive impact in their communities and beyond. The cost per attendee is $485 and includes on-campus housing, food, and program activities. Students interested should mark their calendars for June 22nd through 27th and listen for registration details coming soon. That's all for now. Be blessed, Net family, and have a great week. Psalm 65 and 1 says, Praise waiteth for thee, O God and Zion. What David was saying is that all the praises had been prepared. Everything that God needed, that they wanted to give God glory, had been said. I want to ask you, have you brought a kind word of thanks to the Father? Is anybody grateful for what the Lord has done? When you were on your way to the church this morning, somebody was saying, you know what, I'm going to tell him glory. I'm going to tell him hallelujah. I'm going to thank him for being my mortgage. Thank him for meeting the rent. And you walked in and the praise is wet, ready. Praise waited for him. He don't wait on praise. Come on, we're just going to say, Lord, you're my everything. Let's say that together, everybody.
anybody just want to tell the Lord you're my everything? Oh, Just wanna sing hallelujah. Oh Lord, you're my head. You're my head. When my friends walked away and my family turned their back on me. Oh Lord, you're my head. You're my everything. How you lift up my head. You're my strong deliverer, my strong tower, oh Lord, oh Lord. you're my everything, oh, 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 you're my everything. I just want to lift my hands and say thank you, Jesus, oh, oh Lord. There's none like you. Oh, Lord. Yes, you are. Everything. 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 There's none like you. Oh, how you meet my needs. You're my doctor. You're my lawyer in the courtroom, Lord. Everything. You're my healer. You're my healer. You're my healer, Lord. You're my everything. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not a one. No, 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 no. on he deserves glory right there come on he deserves the glory he deserves the honor we just want to recognize you for your faithfulness for how you keep us how you bless us how you keep your hands on our children how you keep us through the storm how you keep us through the rain how you lift up our heads when we're bowed down you keep our minds in perfect peace and we just want to say thank you oh lord oh lord you're my everything oh oh can everybody say that together oh lord oh lord you're my everything come on tell him he's your everything oh Somebody never said it before, but come on, say hallelujah. Somebody just remembered how faithful he's been. Say hallelujah. That's a breakthrough. Just lift your hands, slip it up, and tell him thank you. Thank you for being everything. Hallelujah. There's not a friend 
like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else, none else can heal. Oh, my soul. And no, not, not one, no, no, not one, said Jesus knows all about my struggle. And he will die until the day is done. Oh, there's not one friend like the Lord. Oh, no, not one, no, not one, no, not one. Chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. We began a series through the book of Acts last Sunday, and we're taking it passage by passage through this book. There's a word I want to lift up this morning. I'll be brief. This is the way the word of God reads. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times 
or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I want to talk about not business as usual. It's understandable why the disciples interpreted the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his subsequent 40-day self-revelation in the manner that they did. They interpreted the fact of what they had experienced of Jesus' resurrection and the fact that on the third day morning God raised him up and this resurrection was not spiritual or metaphorical, but it was physical because they had come into direct contact with the physical presence of Jesus Christ. Thomas had placed his finger in the imprint of the nails. They had conversed with Jesus. They had even spent time with him on the sea shore of Tiberias where he made fish for them over coal they knew without a shadow of a doubt that his resurrection reality was real and since his resurrection returned him to them the assumption was made that he, the next move would be to return the kingdom to Israel Israel had been a kingdom two times. The first time was under the Davidic dynasty. You remember that David was king of Israel. Saul was king of Israel. Solomon was king of Israel. Rehoboam was king of Israel. But under Rehoboam's reign, we saw Israel be taken captive, the kingdom was supplanted by Babylon, and Israel was no longer a kingdom under its own rulership. The second time that Israel was a kingdom was under the Maccabees. But the Maccabean reign of Israel was interrupted by Rome. At the time of Jesus and his earliest disciples, his earliest followers, Israel was under Roman occupation. And what the disciples wanted was for business to go back to normal. They were after things to return to the way they used to be. They, they wanted Jesus to settle for mediocrity, to return them to a pace of normalcy. And it's understandable because that is how we often interpret our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we hear it in our prayers. We ask God to return us to the days where things used to be, a manner in which we appreciated or enjoyed more. We, we often are guilty of understanding our faith, our relationship with Jesus Christ as a tool of reform as opposed to a tool of revolution. We often express and, and interpret our relationship with Jesus as a bridge backwards as opposed to a propellant forward. And so Jesus had to clarify for these disciples 
Don't interpret my resurrection as an indication that I'm interested in returning anything back to the way it was. That I have not come to this earth, climbed the Via del Rosa, hung on a Roman cross, been buried in Joseph's tomb, been resurrected and got up with all power in my hands to simply reorient and reorder earthly kingdoms. That my resurrection is not about business as usual. In fact, Jesus says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. You're asking for information that you're not entitled to. And I understand the disciples' concerns. They, they were simply trying to put their finger on the pulse of what the next move would be, where, what, what would happen next. After all, Solomon said, that there is a time and a season for everything under heaven. And I guess the disciples, they, they knew like you and I know that life does come at you fast. And you, you do well to try to plan, try to strategize, try to pick your shots as you approach this life. But Jesus says... Don't worry about that. And I came to talk this morning to some people who feel overwhelmed by the rapid change of life. You, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what to do. It's difficult for you to interpret the circumstances of what is going on around you. If you've ever been there, this word is for you. If you've, if you've ever had to hear the doctor say that there is some health malady in your body, and now you have to submit yourself to the rigidity of a health regimen, maybe chemotherapy, maybe radiation, maybe a sequence of medications, and they're not quite sure how this sequence is going to impact you and whether or not it will work to actually heal you. And you're trying to understand how to, how to process and interpret all of this, how you'll get through it. Maybe you have to go into a boardroom this week and you're trying to get your strategy together, but, 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 you're, but you're not quite clear what to do because you don't know what, what they're going to throw at you. You know, folk come out of all kinds of bags and do all types of things. And while they dangle a carrot over here, somebody will throw something over there. I, I, I came to talk this day to those who are unsure on what the next season of your life will be. This, this word is for you. Jesus says it is not for you to know the times or the season that the Father has fixed in his own authority. God is the only one who knows what's going to happen today and tomorrow and the next day and the next month that's none of your business but you shall hear me receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you what that means is for every new day and every new situation and every new challenge and every new opposition and every new journey God will give you power for that experience. What I'm trying to say is you may not be able to see it from where you're standing right now, but when you get to it, trust knowing that God has power that is reserved for you in that space and in that moment in time because we serve a God who 
promises to give us this day our daily bread which means he may not do it in a week prior but he will give it to you right when you need it and let me pause right there and just ask is there anybody in this sanctuary who can testify that God does show up right on time and give you everything that you need that you might stand and do his will I came to tell somebody maybe it is unpredictable but God will give you power this word in the Greek is dunamis it's earth shattering supernatural strength giving transformative earth shattering strength uh. it's, it's like if you're at the bottom of a high mountain and in your own strength you cannot reach its summit but then a helicopter comes a helicopter has an engine in it that is developed to take you from the very bottom to the peak of the mountain. Jesus is saying, whatever you walk into, maybe you can't conquer it in your own strength or in your own intelligence, but get into the Holy Ghost helicopter. He'll take you from where you are. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. To where you need to be. I'm not coming through clearly. He says, and you will receive dunamis after the parakletos has come upon you. Dunamis is power. Paracletus, Paracletos, Holy Ghost. Maybe you don't know what the Paracletos is, but you do know what a paramedic is. If, if, you, if you're sick, if you get sick right now in here, we'll call 911 for them to send a paramedic now, the paramedic is not the hospital. The paramedic can keep you alive until you get to the hospital. It, because the paramedic bridges the gap. And whenever there's some distance between where you are and where you need to be, the Holy Spirit bridges the gap. I, I just, I, am I coming through clearly? I, the, the Holy Spirit knows how to get in between where you are and where you need to be so that you can make it to your destination and stay alive. Some of us are here today not because of our own strength, but the Holy Ghost came and bridged the... Some of y'all are still looking at me. Maybe, maybe you don't know what a paraclete is. Maybe you don't know what a paramedic is. But you do know what a parachute is if if you're in a at a high point if you're flying on a plane and you've got to get from the plane to the ground you, you ought not jump by yourself you ought to get a parachute and the parachute has a button that when you press that button it helps you to land on your feet in a place where you should have died 
That's what the Holy Ghost does. It helps us to land in places where we should have failed, where, where we should have died, where we should have been destroyed. That's why some of us are here this morning standing when we should have fallen because when we could not land on our own, God sent the power of the Holy Ghost in order to talk, cause us to land on our own feet. Somebody ought to give God praise that you're still standing because God gave you the power of the Holy Spirit to land on your feet. That's how you survive. That's how you didn't go crazy. That's how you didn't lose your mind. That's how you kept the family together because we serve a God who will help you land on your feet. And somebody ought to give God praise just for this past week that you went through some battles, but you landed on your feet. You had some heartbreak, but you landed on your feet. Some people walked out on you, but you landed on your feet because we serve a God who will be a parachute for you and you shall receive power. <coughs> I'm done. God bless you. I hope you have a good week. But no, whatever you walk into, God's got power for that. No, no matter the battles that you face, we serve a God who will fight with you. So don't be concerned about what might happen on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Whatever you walk into, God will give you power for that. Whatever enemies may gone for you, God will give you power for that. Whatever situation you've got to tunnel through, God will give you power for that. Maybe it's a divorce staring you in the face. God will give you power for that. Maybe it's bankruptcy. God will give you power for that. Maybe it's raising children by yourself. God will give you power for that. Maybe you've got to do what you've never done before. God will give you power for that. Maybe you've got to take that exam. God will give you power for that. Maybe you've got to finish that program. God will give you power for that. Maybe you got to show up to work one more day and deal with treacherous co-workers and crazy bosses, but God will give you power for that. So be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. God will hold you up. God will give power and favor and anointing and grace and resources but I ain't the only one that knows that is there anybody here that can look back over your life and all the times when it looked like you wouldn't make it but God stepped in and made a way where there is no way and so we can lift up holy hands and tell him thank you if he did it before He'll do it again. I know that he's able. You, you may not know what's coming tomorrow or the next day. But Jesus promises his people, I'll give you power. And we ought not take the Holy Spirit just... That's power in here. You don't really need the Holy Ghost to run, shout, holy dance. But you will encounter some situations. Where God has to be tangibly real. Where, where you ain't got to talk about Jesus. You got to feel his living reality. In that moment, I just came to encourage somebody, whatever you're facing, God will give you power. The word for us this morning is resist the urge to worry about what's coming before it gets here. Trust God that when you do your best, that when you fully prepare yourself, that in that moment, God will give you.
power. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. The word for us is to trust God. We're standing all over the church. Perhaps you're here and you're wondering what all this Jesus stuff is about. You're at the end of your rope. I guess I just want to inform you there's another power. There's another resource that you can tap into. We're human. We run out of strength. We run out of intellect. We run out of resources sometimes. But when I was in college, and I would run out of money. I could call my mom. And my mom who had more resources than I had would put a deposit in my account so that I could fulfill my responsibilities. God will put power in your account. He'll make a deposit in your account that'll get you over the hump if you've not tried him if you have not tapped into that resource today ought to be your day the doors of the church they're open you can come now by letter by Christian experience if you need a change we offer Christ to you God is the joy and the strength of my life God bless you, sister. Never to leave me. He never comes to
Church family, would you help me thank God for those who have come this morning, Sister Kay and brother and sister Miles, we welcome you into our family of faith. God, we thank you this day for each of these individuals, their lives, their trajectories. And we ask God that you would give them power, power that emboldens them in any situation. We thank you that you've sent them in this direction. I pray, O oh Lord, that this would be a place where they can grow and become all that you would have them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, church family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. The blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you in your labor, in your leisure in your meditation, in your celebration, may you be blessed. May you have dunamis power. May you be propelled by the parakletos until that day that we shall meet Jesus face to face and all God's people said together, amen. Go in peace. Have a strong week.